In her role as Winnie Cooper in The Wonder Years, Donica McKellar was in touch with her creative side as an actor. Winnie. Hi. Did you get my message? This is your order? I knew it was the only way I was going to get to see you tonight. So we're still on for dinner? When the night Oh, so cute. Did you know that Donica is also a real life mathematician? With so many students struggling with math, she's dedicated to changing a child's perception of the subject. Her new book, Double Puppy Trouble, teaches multiplication through puppy fueled chaos and a message of gratitude. New York Times bestselling author Donica McKellar, good morning. Good morning. Uh, when did you realize that you were a little bit different than, than most people and that you had uh, two sides to your personality growing up? Oh gosh, I never thought about myself as discovering that I was different from most people. That's hilarious. I think for me, you know, I was an actress growing up and then I took a break from acting to go to UCLA and getting a degree in mathematics for me was like a very important um, separation from Hollywood. I needed to find out who I was outside of Winnie Cooper and learning to feel valuable for something that had nothing to do with Hollywood was was wonderful for me. And I, I gained this sort of confidence that comes from feeling smart and tackling difficult challenges. I mean, being a math major at UCLA is challenging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 look, I, I loved it. <laughs> multiplication but, was challenging yeah. for me. But when I say, and maybe, not, not, maybe I worded it a little bit differently, not that you were so different, but it's interesting because a lot of girls, even when they are smart in math, we still see in, in surveys, try to hide it or they, they steer away Absolutely. from math at a certain part in school. And when you were at UCLA majoring in math, were you outnumbered by the guys? Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, I mean, it was definitely, especially as I got higher and higher in math. In, you know, first calculus classes, it, it was pretty even, more boys, but not by a lot. But once I got into like the graduate level classes, especially, it was, it was just me and a couple other girls, maybe. And, and that's, you know, that's changing a little. Um, but what I learned doing research about the issue is that girls' confidence in math drops before their abilities do, before their grades drop. Yeah. And that is, it's all about the confidence. It's all about perception. And when you believe that your greatest asset is your appearance and not your brain, then that's what tends to happen. And when we are afraid of math because we think, oh, we're not going to be good at it, then when a problem comes along and challenging um, class or, or, or a failed test or whatever it is, instead of seeing it as a stumbling block, then, oh, well, I'll get over that. We tend, girls tend to see it as evidence of what they've known deep down all along, which is that they don't belong in math. So I've been working very hard to change that perception. For 15 years, I've been writing math books, um, uh, all at mckellarmath.com. There's a big slider button. I've got books ages zero to 16, and that slider button will tell you which book is best for your child. Yeah. I teach math in a lot of the books. And then in my book, Double Puppy Trouble, the new one, this is a picture book to be enjoyed on the couch. It's not really a teaching book so much as it sneaks math in. So it sneaks in um, doubling. Well, numbers. it makes it entertaining the, and it makes it understandable. Yes. Sometimes I think we forget that in the curriculum that you, you got to make it relatable, especially the younger someone is. You figured that out in your wonder years, right? So speaking of wonder <laughs> years, the beginning of that acting career for you, how did that come about? Oh, the beginning? I mean, my gosh, I just auditioned. Um, my mom uh, asked me if I ever wanted to try acting and I saw it on TV and it looked fun. And I was like, yeah, um, you know, I, it was the Wonder Years was about that middle school time. It started off anyway in junior high where emotions are running high and we're all wondering like who we are. And we have got these questions of identity and and that age, that age, that 12, you know, 12 years old age is such a pivotal moment. And it's interesting, when I was studying the issue of girls in math, that was the exact age that girls started to lose their confidence. Yeah. And that's why I chose that age, because of the Wonder Years, and because of understanding that, I think. Yeah. It's part of why I chose that And that's the reason why a lot of us <laughs> love that show. <laughs> Because there are kids who are yeah. who are about to take that journey who loved it, kids who are in yes. the middle of it, and then those of us who've Ooh. been through it. I want to show you a picture of my wonder year. Okay, this is my wonder. <laughs> Do we have this picture here? Okay, that was my wonder year, Donica. Aww. Yeah, yeah. No, there's no ah. <laughs> I was wondering yeah, why that hairstyle was depression. put on my head, Mama. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I, used to, I used to be mad because they were like put me in these 1960s. I'm like, how come I can't dress like cool like yeah. my friends like. 
Candace Cameron, you know, yeah. like people who are in like today's show. But but the thing is, those themes are universal. And those feelings of insecurity and all the rest of it are universal. And that's why in my books, like Math Doesn't Suck and Kiss My Math, the older kid books, <laughs> it's all, I wrap up all sorts of self-esteem stuff. Um, it's all about like, hey, here's how to lift your mood. Here's how to feel better about yourself. Um, here's when you're struggling with a problem. That's good. That's yeah. what you want. Um, and so that happy good positive association with math is so important which is why at a young age like like double puppy trouble these are big numbers and kids at that age if they can associate big numbers with not something scary but with puppies yeah i mean how awesome what a wonderful gift to give your children yeah and what a wonderful gift in messaging that you give as well because it's you know it's for both boys and girls and um in in the wonder years i remember there's a moment where you scored higher on your math sat <laughs> than kevin did also you know in the 60s it was not socially acceptable to do better at math than boys now if you're going to do a typing test go at it sister but don't score higher and so there was there was some great messaging in, in the wonder years that kind of related to your life well, and the, the wonder is was just shedding a light on a problem in terms of the biases against women. And, uh, and that's part of what I'm aiming to overcome here with these books, with the, the books that, you know, that are definitely aimed at girls from middle school, like Math Doesn't Suck, Kiss My Math, Hot X, <laughs> Girls Get Curves, my geometry book. Um, but even the young, you know, most of my younger kid books do focus on a little girl. And so it's, you know, it's seeing yourself in the story, seeing that you belong as a girl, seeing that that this is your place. Mathematics is it's not a bonus if you're good at math. That you belong there, you belong oh. here, and that's that's one of my messages as yeah. well. Yeah, I wish I had sat next to you uh, in class. Uh, my, so my son, I got a phone call from a teacher one day because he was struggling with math. He's dyslexic, so it was a little bit harder for him. And the teacher called and she goes, "You know what your son did today?" I go, "What?" He stood up in the middle of the room and he said, "Everyone." pencils down. I found something on the phone called a calculator. You don't need this. And so you know, <laughs> sometimes sometimes kids joke, oh, why do we need math? We already have, but you still need to know how to do the formula. There you are a lot it's of- It's also amazing. Yes, it's amazing brain exercise. Go into the gym for your brain. That's what math is. And if you do easy problems all day long, you're not gonna get stronger, but do those challenging problems. Lift those muscles, get strong, and show yourself that you're able to handle challenges. That's one of the gifts of mathematics and why I write these books for math. Are there other ways to strengthen your brain? Sure, but you're in math class anyway as a kid. Why not tackle it and say, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get good at it and show myself that I'm stronger and smarter than I thought. And how do you do that? By sticking with it, going, getting help, making sure that you stay with something and don't give up. My books are a great resource. There are other resources as well, but I really encourage kids to see math as a challenge that they want to tackle because it's gonna make them stronger. Yeah, is the bigger challenge our perceptions uh, and we're fighting those old uh, stereotypes or is it how we teach math? Because I, I remember sitting at the table in tears and my mom couldn't help me. Yeah. And then my mom who was much older um, because she had me later in life was digging out her books from 1930s. And there was these old yellow pages and she goes, I don't know if this can help, but I don't know what you're doing right there, but this kind of explains it. And it was, and it was, she's right. I literally learned out of that book better than the current book that I had sitting in front of me. Do we have to how? look at how we're teaching and who we're teaching? Uh, I'm gonna use an example. I, uh, my little ADHD brain did not understand greater than less than. I couldn't understand why it was going this way one minute and this way the next minute. I literally would make a 15 on a test because I was just guessing. And then a teacher finally the looked at me. Mouth. Yeah, she finally, my teacher looked at me and she goes, look, the alligator's hungry. He wants to eat the most that he can. I went, oh, suddenly I'm on honor yes. roll. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, that's how, it's how math is presented. Makes all the difference. Let's do it in a way that's not intimidating. Let's use characters. Let's use little animals, alligators, cartoons. In my book, The Times Machine, I teach multiplication and division with like characters and graphic, you know, comics and, and little Mr. Mouse. And, you know, you've got to make it fun. Why not make math be like kindergarten all the way through high school? Yeah, Donica, if I had your book through school, I could have been an engineer. All right, <laughs> an architect, something. Anyway, Donica, thank you so much for making it fun and, and really standing up for this cause. Thank you so much for having me.